So we are here today to talk about resale price maintenance in the musical instrument industry and how this, the Competition Markets Authority in the UK, the CMA, went on a crusade uh, around two or three years ago in order to uh, make things right in the musical instruments sector. So the first point I would like to touch on today is what are the facts which led to the five cases against major players in the musical instruments field? Well, the CMA, so the Competition and Market Authority, which is the body in the United Kingdom in charge of um, uh, enforcing competition law in, uh, in the UK. So the CMA received quite a number of complaints uh, in relation to resale price maintenance um, in, in the musical uh, instrument sector from, in particular, customers like you and me. You know, people just go into a shop or go online and want to buy a musical instrument, be it a flute or a guitar or um, a keyboard, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so the CMA uh, noted that um, in, in any case, across the board, the most of the complaints received by the CMA fronting team uh, uh, is the frontline team is is actually in relation to resale price maintenance. But it also noticed that in particular in the musical instruments sector in the UK, it did receive an enormous amount of complaints uh, in relation to resale price maintenance, which from now on we're going to call RPM um, from customers. And so RPM is a, is a, is a, a, a type of anti-competitive behavior, and it's a breach of competition law by various parties via anti-competitive agreements and or concerted agreements, whereby suppliers ma or manufacturers tend to limit the ability of the retailers of a products to discount the prices of such supplied products to their customers. So, in, uh, uh, if I want to say this in another way, when the suppliers and manufacturers provide their products to retailers who are then going to sell those products onto customers, either online or in brick and mortar shops, there are some agreements which are either tacit or uh, explicit between those uh, suppliers slash manufacturers and retailers that the uh, retailers cannot freely discount and set the prices of these supplied products. Okay, and that is RPM, resale price maintenance, and that is a breach of competition law because the uh, uh, retailers should be able to offer lower prices. Of course, they could offer higher prices, but they could also offer uh, lower prices um, and, and, and definitely set their prices independently so that they can attract more customers, be it online on their websites or on brick and mortar um, premises. So, so as I was saying, the reason why the CMA went on a crusade is because it received a lot of uh, RPM complaints in relation to musical instruments in the UK. And um, uh, the way the uh, CMA reacted is that it sent some warning letters to quite a lot of players in the musical instrument um, uh, sector in the UK. So it's sent a warning letter to over 80, 80 suppliers and retailers of musical instruments suspected of having engaged in RPM about RPM and the need to comply with competition law. So that was in 2015, 2016. And in this letter, this letter I haven't read because it's not made public, but in the other letters that then it said, so then it published in an open letter to suppliers and retailers, retailers on the 21st of June, 2016, which it updated on the 20th of June, 2017, to provide details of the um, 
million pounds sterling fine <laughs> that the CMA had imposed for RPM relating to domestic light fittings. So in this um, open letter, which I did read from uh, 2016 update in 2017, the RPM, sorry, the CMA informed these, uh, uh, all these suppliers and retailers from the music in, in musical instrument sector what RPM was, why it was illegal under UK competition law, and what the CMA had done in the domestic light fittings in relation to one uh, retailer which it fined 2.7 million uh, pounds sterling uh, fine, uh, which it fined 2.7 million pounds sterling because of uh, RPM. So after that, it published a third open letter. So a third letter, which was an open letter to all suppliers and retailers of musical instruments on the 29th of June, 2020, reminding them that even though most of them had not been investigated yet for RPM, they were not off the hook and um, they still had to comply with competition law and to um, stop season disease from any RPM activities um, because that may attract a fine. Okay, so the CMA really uh, used a very uh, rational approach. It received the complaints from customers, a lot of complaints from customers in the musical instrument uh, sector. Then it issued three warning letters. Among those two of these warning letters were open letters, which I have read and where I could actually see that it was really doing this sort of educational uh, uh, purpose and um, and um, uh, and um, you know informing in a very rational manner of the uh, uh, musical instrument suppliers and retailers what was RPM, why it was illegal, what they should do, what they couldn't do, why they should definitely not do RPM, and also the risk that RPM incurred, which was to get a fine. And so. Um, sadly, these warnings did not bring the uh, um, consequences that the uh, CMA expected, which was that it wanted the uh, uh, musical instrument suppliers and uh, retailer to stop doing R RPM, which I think is the logical approach, right? Well, it didn't work, I'm afraid. And the CMA came to the conclusion that they just could not auto-regulate and auto uh, correct those in, in, instrument, uh, uh, musical instrument um, suppliers and um, retailers, and therefore it started in five investigation, investigations on the 17th of April 20, 2018 against five major players, um, I would even say actually six major players in the musical instruments field in the UK. And so the second point that I wanted to touch on today was why has the CMA decided to take such a heavy handed approach to rectify the behavior in the musical instrument sector? Well, and, and also what is the procedural history of these five cases? Well, the um, uh, as I just mentioned, the musical in instruments industry proved to be completely incapable of uh, auto correcting and uh, kept on uh, practicing RPM. Uh, despite having received those free warning letters. So the, 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 there's also, I think, um, a, um, a sort of uh, cultural difference in the sense that most of, most of the companies that um, the CMA went after were actually foreign companies, be it Japanese companies, firms like uh, Yamaha, Casio, Korg, and Roland, or US companies such as Fender. And I think that in these two uh, major, I mean, you know, really uh, uh, efficient, um, economically speaking, countries, well, the notion of uh, competition and also f f freedom to set prices is perhaps not the same that one has in Europe. Okay, so um, yeah, so these these um, six. Uh, I mean, five foreign companies were targeted through, of course, the um, UK wholly owned uh, 
subsidiaries uh, because uh, I think culturally there was a disconnect. They just uh, couldn't couldn't rectify their behaviors that they perhaps were free to to to, to adopt um, in the U.S. and in Japan, so anywhere else in the world, but which were actually uh, unlawful in Europe, um, and in particular in the U.K., which at the time, by the way, was still part of the European Union as one of the 28 member states of the European Union. So, um, so yes, so um, RPM, which is which is banned under Article 101, uh, one of the uh, uh, Treaty of um, uh, Sorry, it's the Treaty of the Functioning of the European Union is, is actually the foundation under which the, um, uh, the um, CMA launched those five investigations. And it is also uh, the chapter one of the Competition Act 1998, which is the national law regulating competition law in the UK. And, um, and so, yeah, under the Article 101 of the Treaty of the Functioning of the European Union and Chapter One of the Competition Act 1998, uh, this, uh, the CMA launched those five investigations. And so, what is quite interesting as well is that back in the um, early uh, 2010, so in particular in 2011, there was a, a, a landmark decision handed down by the European Court of Justice in relation to online sales and the fact that a supplier could not limit the ability of its retailers uh, to, to do uh, e-commerce sales and to set uh, freely their prices on, uh, on, online uh, and to sell also, in this case, um, pharmaceutical and cosmetics products online. So this decision from the European Court of Justice was Pierre Fabre, Dermo Cosmetic SAS versus President, President de l'Autorité de la Concurrence et du Ministre de l'Economie, de l'Industrie et de l'Emploi. So that was handed down in October 2011, and the ECJ, the European Court of Justice, confirmed that retailers must have the ability to set freely they prices online and to do some sales of a of products online, even if they are part of a selective distribution network set up by uh, by the supplier. In this case, Pierre Fabre Dermo Cosmetic, and um, this um, case law was confirmed again by the ECJ in its ruling Coty Germany GmbH versus Parfumerie Accente GmbH, handed down on the sixth of December. 2017, in which the ECJ uh, ruled that, um, um, again, confirmed that um, uh, RPM is illegal and um, is, a, is a hardcore uh, restriction of, um, of competition law and as such is illegal, and um, uh, that um, suppliers must let their retailers set their own prices when they sell online and they must let the their retailers sell their products online. So it's quite strange to see that even though this European um, case law was really quite well established um, back in the early 2000, in the early 2010, as I just mentioned, here we are in 2018, in April 2018, and apparently the musical instrument suppliers and retailers didn't get the memo at all um, on, how to, uh, on how to go about it, about the freedom of uh, setting prices. So, so of course, the, the CMA in its context, you know, decided to have a, a, a quite a heavy uh, handed approach because um, nothing seemed to uh, be sufficiently dissuasive for these um, players in the musical instrument sector to comply with uh, with the law and stop doing RPM. I mean, at the end of the day, it's extremely bad for consumers, you know, if there is a sort of uh, cartel um, of, uh, of uh, uh, retailers who just sell all the musical, musical instruments at the same price in a free enterprise uh, economy like the UK, this is unacceptable. So price, prices must be set freely. And, um, yeah, so the, the, five, the five cases 
went, you know, followed their course from 2018 up until the end of 2019. And then the five decisions were handed down uh, between the end of 2019 and um, September 2022, uh, sorry, 2020. So between um, the end of 2019 to December 2020. And so while the CMA was doing its investigations, it did notice several practices which were completely of, you know, unacceptable, such as um, withholding, such as some suppliers were withholding payment of a retailer's invoice because the such retailer was, uh, was uh, freely setting its own prices or the suppliers were making financial bonuses contingent on maintaining a certain price point, or the suppliers were reducing the retailer's credit limit, or the suppliers were restricting the retailer's access to popular product ranges of, of musical instruments, or the suppliers were offering less favorable contractual terms to a retailer because, as a, a retaliation because such retailer was freely setting its prices. So it really did see that there were lots of illegal um, re RPM prices, pricing policies, which were going on uh, in this, uh, with, with those four, five um, suppliers during the course of its investigation. So on October uh, 2019, the CMA published its first decision against Casio a Japanese manufacturer of digital pianos and keyboards, which it fined 3.7 million pounds for breaching competition law by engaging in RPM. 3.7 million pounds, pretty substantial. Then again, in March 2020, it published its second decision against Fender, a US manufacturer of guitars, which it fined 4.5 million pounds uh, against for breaching competition law uh, by engaging in RPM. This is the highest fine that the CMA imposed on during on its first degree decisions. Then again, in July, the CMA published its third decision against Korg, which is a Japanese manufacturer of synthesizers and high-tech equipment, which it fined 1.5 million again for RPM because of RPM. And July 2020 again, it published its fourth decision against Roland, a Japanese manufacturer of electronic drum kits and related components and accessories, which it fined uh, just above four million pounds for breaking competition law by engaging in RPM. And in September, finally, the last decision, the fifth decision was issued against GAC, G-A-K, GAC, which is a UK online and brick and mortar retailer of Yamaha guitars and digital pianos. And this decision was also, also against Yamaha, which is a Japanese manufacturer of guitars and digital pianos. However, only GAC, the UK retailer, was fined £278,945 uh, because Yamaha was immune for, uh, from fines for blowing the whistle on the RPM arrangement to the CMA, and it also admitted liability. So it did get a total exemption of, of a fine lucky Yamaha, um, but both were actually found in this uh, uh, last and fifth decision uh, to be to, to have breached competition law by engaging in RPM. So what's quite interesting as well is that the CMA used its own guidance as to the appropriate amount of a penalty to find to, to basically uh, set the what he called the appropriate level of those uh, financial penalties. Uh, on to these uh, five players. So there are two criteria that the CMA uses to uh, find the, to, to set this appropriate amount of penalty. First criteria being to impose penalties on infringing undertakings, which reflect the seriousness of infringement. And also um, the other objective is to ensure that the threat of penalties will deter both the infringing undertakings and other undertakings that may be considering anti-competitive activities from engaging in them. So there's definitely a deterrence factor in uh, the way the CMA uh, sets the fines. And we can see that the levels are pretty substantial. Yeah, the highest one is at 4.5 million, if I remember well, yeah, for Fender. Um, so what are the uh, takeaways from these five decisions that the CMA handed to get down against uh, 
suppliers and uh, uh, manufacturers and um, and um, retailers in the musical instruments sector. Well, the first is that the CMA has launched its own in-house price monitoring tool whereby it, it can um, um, control in real time the various prices that um, are set to sell musical instruments online by those UK retailers. So it is a way of uh, monitoring um, the prices and detecting suspicious activity in the musical instruments sector in particular. And um, that is a way also to, for the CMA to be able to spot uh, that there are some agreements restricting online discounting which are going on because with its uh, in-house online uh, price monitoring tool, it can definitely see it and track what's going on. So this way the CMA has a better idea of which sectors to clamp down on, allowing it to prioritize enforcement in those areas, supporting to protect more customers online. So the first takeaway is, okay, this happened between 2019 and 2020, but you are not off the hook, musical instrument suppliers and, um, and retailers, because with this ongoing uh, in-house price monitoring tool that we use, uh, we are tracking you now and in the future. So stop IP RPM for now and in the future. And also uh, the other takeaway is that uh, the enforcement actions by the CMA were actually quite wide ranging because they were catching a musical instrument retailer, GAC, G-A-K, GAC in this case, and as well as also directors and senior staff um, into its nest. Next, indeed the, um, um, musical instruments uh, 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 suppliers who, who had some senior staff and management who did not comply with a separate responsibility to be well informed on competition law themselves and instead were involved and complicit in this illegal behavior of practicing RPM uh, were actually fined even more um, by the CMA. And so the CMA increased the fines as it did in the Casio Korg and Fender decisions because the senior staff and management and the directors were um, complicit and, um, and um, uh, actually breaching competition of themselves by doing RPM, not, not only the underlings. And um, uh, so, so the fines were extremely deterrent to uh, continuing RPM in the uh, in the musical instrument sector. I mean, when you get fined around, you know, 19%, between 12 and 19% of your turnover, uh, annual turnover, it, it, it is definitely like a, a tough lesson to learn. And uh, interestingly enough, one of the, um, of the infringers decided to appeal the, uh, the, the decision, um, and that was, I believe, Casio, was it Casio who appealed? I think that's quite right. Well, basically they appealed, um, sorry, it was Roland actually, uh, uh, which appealed the infringement decision in relation, in relation to the level of its penalty, which was just above, just above four million pounds. Uh, despite the fact that Roland had actually signed a settlement agreement offered by the CMA to settle this investigation and therefore get a discount of 20% uh, on the fine because it had settled. Yet Roland appealed the infringement decision and in 19, on the 19th of April 2021, the Competition Appeal Tribunal uh, handed, its, uh, handed down its judgment, rejecting this appeal, as well as increasing the level of the fine, because he said, since you uh, signed the settlement agreement, but you actually appealed, which ba basically annulled the settlement agreement, we are now going to remove a 20% discount that you received as, uh, as um, part of the settlement. And we are hiking, therefore, the uh, fine from just above four million pounds to uh, uh, just above five million pounds. So that was not a smart move on the Rollins' uh, uh, side, uh, and um, they, they, they got even more kicked in the butt because they appealed. Um, and I'd say that um, the decision from the decisions 
from the CMA, the five judgments from the CMA are, are in line with the, um, with the uh, policy put in place by EU regulators on fighting RPM, in particular in the musical instrument industry, but not only, also in, uh, in the consumer goods industry. Um, and so some players are targeted by RPM investigations, such as Nike and Guess, and also in the, um, in the electronic sector and uh, um, uh, hardware sector, uh, as, uh, as Asus and Philips among others, are also targeted by the European Commission on RPM practices. So, but, but, but in relation to the musical instrument sector in particular, the um, uh, Germany, Sweden, and Poland have, have also uh, launched some investigations of RPM in this particular sector in 2020. And um, in Austria decided to actually impose also some fines for RPM in the musical instrument sector. So we can see that, that this uh, uh, fight against RPM is really a European um, um, policy, uh, which is, which is uh, uh, implemented by uh, uh, most competition regulators in, regulators in, the, in, in Europe. So uh, an interesting update as well is that the 2010 EU guidelines on vertical restraints so vertical restraints um, are basically all these uh, um, restraints that, uh, that limit competition, one of them being RPM. And so they were replaced by the 2022 EU guidelines on vertical restraints. They were published, I think, in June 2022. And um, um, again, in these to this updated version of the guidelines uh, uh, released in June 2022, RPM is described as a hardcore restriction and the article uh, four of uh, the regulation 2002-720, the vertical block exemption regulation. So um, it remains, RPM does remain a hardcore restriction, uh, which is a breach of competition law. And this is also the, the view taken by the UK, which uh, adopted a new vertical agreement blocks exemption order in, uh, in June 2022 also. And in this order, in this vertical agreement block exemption order, uh, the RPM is also described as being a hardcore restriction and any agreement which sets out an RPM cannot be exempted under this, um, this order. So retailers and manufacturers beware, embrace the new online El Dorado without meddling prices or else. Thank you so much for being here, uh, all of you guys. Thank you.